Welcome back guys, JC here. I'm going to completely walk you through flashing firmware 2 and setting up your uh, brushed F3 EVO flight controller. If you're just now joining us, in the last video I uh, placed that flight controller on a small micro-sized quadcopter with the two-cell power setup. If you are interested in checking it out, you should be seeing the link on the top right of your screen now. Now this flight controller comes with clean flight firmware, but I'm going to recommend switching to beta flight firmware. Uh, I just think beta flight is much better overall. Now you don't have to, I'm not telling you you have to, it's completely up to you. Um, but either way, even if you do choose to use clean flight, still watch this part of the video because uh, the next time you go to uh, update your firmware, you will have to do this either way. So if you try to click on connect, you will get a little message pop up uh, basically saying that the firmware is incompatible with the Betaflight configurator. That's because CleanFlight firmware does not work on the Betaflight configurator. It does work the other way around though. So long story short, we have to flash Betaflight firmware to the flight controller, um, which we will do here. But before you do this, if you go to the welcome screen, you'll see the download for Zadig. If you have not yet downloaded it, then go ahead and do that. Uh, now I can't go into Zadig and use my screen recorder at the same time, it always turns my screen recorder off, but I did go ahead and take some screenshots for you. Go ahead and open up Zadig. Uh, the next thing you want to do is, in my review for this, um, actually I'll just throw a picture up on the screen now to show you the boot pads. You want to jump the boot pads just like you would on any other flight controller. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look in the top right of your screen now. Uh, that's going to be a more detailed, in-depth video on how to jump boot pads and connect your USB and flash firmware and all that. So check that video out if you have any questions. Uh, but jump the boot pads, then plug in your USB cable. Once you've done that, then click on Options and List All Devices. Then you can click this drop-down box and you should be seeing STM32 bootloader. If you are seeing STM32 virtual COM port, then that means that you did not successfully make it into the bootloader. Common causes of that is uh, if you used a piece of wire to jump the pads, uh, then maybe the, the wire wasn't contacting both pads at the same time you plugged in the USB. Or sometimes, I, I even do this myself, I plug in the USB first and then I jump the pads. Uh, that's not going to work. But whatever it is, um, just keep trying until you see STM32 bootloader. Then, uh, oh, and by the way, once you plug in the USB cable, you can you don't have to keep holding the piece of wire on the boot pads. You can just you can remove it after the USB is plugged in. It's it's not going to come out the bootloader. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, the current driver that's on the board is the STTUB30. But what we want is Win USB. You should automatically see this, but if not, then click these up and down arrows until you find it, and then click Replace Driver. After that, you can close Zadig out, and then go back into Betaflight. Uh, don't disconnect the USB cable, because you have to stay in the bootloader mode to flash firmware. I'm not in the bootloader right now, uh, so I'm, I'm seeing COM5, but you guys should be seeing the letters DFU. If you don't see DFU, then um, just go back into the bootloader again and you should see DFU. Uh, once you see DFU, go to Firmware Flasher and select SP Racing F3 Evo. Uh, just keep in mind it's not the SP Racing F3 or the F3 Mini. Ensure that you are selecting the Evo, then click this drop down box. Uh, pick the newest version of firmware. At uh, this point in time of me recording this video, the newest version is 3.0.0, but if you're watching this at a later date, there's, there's guaranteed to be a newer version. In that case, just use that newer version. Uh, for these, you want to turn all of these on, except the last one. This one doesn't matter, but have all four of these turned on. Then load firmware online. After a few seconds, uh, flash firmware will turn yellow. Click it. It should start flashing firmware. If you don't see it flashing firmware, then just scroll down and here's your little meter right here and you should see the meter going up. Uh, once it's done, you don't have to do this. This is just a personal preference. I disconnect the USB cable. 
go to the welcome screen, then reconnect the USB cable and click connect. Once you are in here, uh, move your multi-rotor around. If it's not moving very quickly, then all you have to do is just click calibrate accelerometer. It doesn't have to be level or anything like that, not yet at least. Um, now it should be moving somewhat quickly. Now, uh, holding your multi-rotor in your hand, you want to move it up and down and see if the multi-rotor on the screen is matching what you do uh, with yours. Now mine's already set. Uh, I don't have to realign the flight controller to the frame, but if you're moving yours up and down and it's actually going to the right or to the left or backwards, all you have to do is go to the configuration tab scroll down to board and sensor alignment and there's really only four options that it's going to be either 0, 90 degrees, 180 degrees or 270 so just try those three options make sure you click save and reboot after you pick one and then go back and just try it again if one of those don't work then just try the other one or one of the other two eventually it's going to work and the picture on the screen will match what you were doing with yours in your hands. Uh, after that, then you want to make sure that it's on a flat level surface. Uh, once you've done that, then you can click Calibrate Accelerometer. Just give it a second, and now it's done. Uh, we'll come back to ports, but first go to Configuration. If you're using a PPM receiver, then make sure you have PPM selected. If you're using a Spectrum satellite receiver or a SBUS receiver, then you want to pick RX Serial. Uh, also, in addition to that, if you, uh, if you choose RX Serial, you have to specify what type of uh, serial-based receiver it is. So if you use a Spectrum receiver, it's going to be one of these two. If it's an SBUS receiver, you will select SBUS, and so on and so on. Um, but if you are using PPM, you don't have to mess with this, just choose PPM. Then remember to save and reboot. Then we can go to ports. Uh, PPM receiver guys, you won't mess with anything here. It's just going to work. Uh, if it does not work, if you go to receiver and you move your sticks around and it's you don't see them moving on here, make sure that you have the uh, PPM receiver on UART number two because UART number two is the only one that uh, PPM is going to work on. Also make sure that your signal wire is on the RX and not the TX. For uh, Spectrum satellite receiver guys, I'm sure you've seen the three little pins that the satellite receivers use. If you have yours connected to that, I know it's right next to UART number three, but they actually share the same circuitry. Um, so that little satellite receiver port is technically UART number three. In that case, you would choose uh, Serial RX, just turn that on. If you use an SBUS receiver, you can place it on any of these three UARTs. Just remember, whichever UART you place it on, you turn Serial RX on for that UART. Now in my build video, I uh, actually added in an on-screen display. If you guys have not done that, you, then you don't have to worry about this step, but I placed mine on UART number three, so I will turn it off for one and turn it on for three. Then save and reboot. Then go to configuration again. Because we're using brushed motors, hopefully you're using brushed motors because uh, this flight controller doesn't accept uh, brushless motors, so select brushed motors. Uh, I'm going to turn on motor stop, that's going to keep the propellers from spinning. Um, whenever I arm it. Uh, now this is a really long explanation but I'm trying to keep this video short. Because we're using brushed motors we will just set this to 1000. Then go down. Um, if you added in a buzzer then you can play with this warning cell voltage value uh, to make that buzzer beep whenever your voltage gets low. Uh, I didn't do a buzzer because I did the on-screen display, but if I did, I would probably set this to like 3.3 and then set this to 3.2, but it's completely up to you. I'm not trying to tell you where to set yours, but uh, now current meter, I know it's showing a current, but that's absolutely wrong. Uh, this flight controller doesn't have a current sensor. Without the current sensor, 
uh, beta flight and clean flight both they kind of use this algorithm to come up with this uh, once again long explanation just go ahead and turn it off because uh, we don't have a current sensor uh, RSSI I am going to turn that off because we're not using an analog RSSI input uh, for this I'm going to set oops, the gyro update frequency uh, completely up to you once again uh, I'm just giving you guys some guidelines and how I'm personally setting up mine I'm going to set it to 4 kilohertz leave the PID loop at 1 kilohertz if you only plan on using uh, acro mode the acro flight mode then you can turn off the accelerometer if you plan on using any horizon or angle uh, angle then leave it turned on uh, I use a bit of all three so I, I just leave it turned on uh, now my receiver does not support telemetry if yours does you can leave this turned on uh, we're not using black box so you can turn that off and we're definitely not using a race transponder the reason those those things are turned on is because we're using the F3 EVO firmware so it thinks we're using the full sized F3 EVO when really we're using uh, I guess you could say a spinoff uh, once you've done all that you can save and reboot now PID tuning uh, I'm not going to mess with this yet because I haven't flown it yet so I, I don't know where I need to uh, adjust my PIDs uh, so I, I would just recommend leaving your PIDs alone for now until you've actually flown it. Um, now your RC rate and RC expo and even super rate, you can adjust these. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to wait until I fly it. Now the throttle mid and expo, I will adjust that. Um, I'm just going to take a rough guess because like I've said a few times now, I haven't flown it yet. But I'm just going to set it to there for now. Uh, once I actually fly it, I'll come back and readjust it. Then save. Go to receiver. I'm going to turn on my transmitter. I won't be showing you any mercy. All right, now you can move your sticks and uh, your roll pitch, y'all, and throttle should be moving on your screen. If not, then that means uh, either your receiver is not properly bound or you have like a TX, your signal wire going to a, a, a TX instead of a RX or something, I don't know, something in your wiring or it's not bound right. That's really the only causes. Um, actually, there's a lot more causes, but that's most common. Uh, now, I've already done this off camera before I started this video, but all my uh, inputs like all the way down it was actually at like 940 something or 960 and then all the way up was like 2040 so I went ahead and adjusted all of my inputs to go from 1000 to 2000 or at least as close as you can get uh, this receiver I'm using is kinda crap so it's it's not wanting to hold steady but uh, it's, it's close enough uh, you should be seeing a link in the corner of your screen now uh, where I show you how to do that um, now uh, you don't have to do this this is just another personal preference that I use on all my builds I'm going to set both of these to 6 and that's it you can save go to modes I've already created switches and I'm going to have a switch for my arm you don't have to do this you can use your uh, stick inputs to arm it I just prefer to have uh, arm on a switch then I want my three flight modes and we'll put all three on the same switch so we've got angle then we've got horizon and then all the way up is neither one of these so that will give me acro if you have a beeper you can go ahead and create a range for that so you can use your beeper as a loss model alarm save now motors we're not going to mess with this because we are using brushed motors and not brushless so this really doesn't apply to us then CLI uh, there's a lot of things you can do in CLI uh, a lot of personal preferences but the one thing I'm going to recommend is you can just type in set motor and we see that the motor PWM rate is 400 and that's uh, typically for brushless motors 
So we will do set space motor underscore PWM underscore rate space equals space. I'm going to do 32,000. I know there's a thousand videos with people doing this a thousand different ways, telling you to use a different number in each video. Uh, I'm not going to go into that long explanation. That This is just what I use. Then hit enter. If you see, it says uh, motor PWM rate set to whatever number you chose, then it worked. If you get this message, unknown command, then that means you either forgot a space or you added too many spaces or you forgot an underscore uh, something happened like it has to be typed exactly like that after you have done that then you can just type in save and enter and it should kick you back out and you are officially done well except for all the on a maybe you have some other stuff you need to do but I'm done that's going to do it guys. Uh, the next video I will give you guys some uh, flight test footage to give you an idea of what kind of power and performance you can expect from the build that I made in the last video. And that's going to do it. So thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.